I will focus mon mostly on three issues uh, based based on that we have a, a model that we can work and try to understand a little bit what is going to happen on, on trade issues. And I will try to, to comply with the 10 minutes. So let me skip uh, the, the global causes that, of course, most of us knows. But I, I wanted to focus in the three crises that we have right now. So we have the food crisis, which you already know, and IFPRI has been pretty active with other institutions on it. We have the fuel crisis, and now we have the financial crisis. And, and this has generated several issues at the same time and several problems, which also has generated a new area of, of artistic dimensions in terms of, uh, for example, this is a map showing uh, all the different unrest and protests as a consequence of the food crisis, the problems with the fuel crisis, the problems with the environment as a result of the fuel crisis, and the lastly, which are the most popular today of what were the causes behind uh, the crisis. Now, the, the important thing is that the decline in, in finance and resources uh, could create several consequences, especially to developing and developed countries. There is a potential decline in, in trade volumes, which is what we are going to focus a little bit in some simulations that we have done here. Uh, fall in inward uh, foreign direct investment, uh, drop in remittances, which we are already seeing important uh, reduce, reduce and, uh, reduction in remittances in, in developing countries, and of course second round effects uh, that could result as a consequence uh, of this. Uh, as it has been shown by, by several estimations, uh, the average projected GDP growth in developing countries will be one quarter of what was expected uh, during the half of 2008. Uh, and of course there is, these are still estimates and there is risk that this could be even higher. And average growth in Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and Latin America is predicted to be negative. And this, as a consequence, has significant effects on potential unemployment. ILO is projecting 30 million more people will be unemployed in 2009. And the worst case scenario is up to 50 million people. These are the simulations of the IMF in terms of the, of the distribution of how growth of GDP, uh, real growth of GDP, will be over time. This 2005, where the, the orange means positive growth, and the lighter or the wider means zero growth or inclusively could go to negative growth. As you can see, over time, the situation is getting a lot wider, which means that there will be significant reduction. The result of this is that you will have a significant effect over poverty. Uh, in 2007, we have 850 million poor or chronically malnourished people. And in 2009, more than 1 billion uh, are expected. So what we are doing in terms of, of the simulations of, of trade? Basically, we have three mechanisms through which this could happen. The first one is that the financial crisis could, affect, uh, could create a credit crunch. And this implies less investments and also could imply some restrictions on trade, specifically for developing countries and small producers. Then you have the financial crisis could cr consequence of an economic crisis, which will create some underemployment. And this will, of course, have an effect over demand, lower demand. And this could result in, in lower trade. And for this, elasticity of trade of GDP bigger than one uh, could, could create significant effects over developing countries. And finally, the deflation uh, and specific tariffs in agriculture uh, could create a mechanical increase of, of the protection level, which could also uh, will be seen as an impact of agriculture. So based on that, uh, and also on the potential long-term effects of, of ending the global imbalances, <laughs> we ran some simulations to try uh, to capture that. But before going into the simulations, one important issue that we, we wanted to raise is that uh, there has been a lot, talk about, a lot of talk about the increase in protectionism in among countries and, and, and since September 2008. However, uh, these measures uh, are consistent with the natural cyclical uh, evolution, cyclicality of trade policies. And there is work by David Laborde and, and Antoine Boué uh, that had computed that in the last 13 years, 4.5% uh, of tariff lines have increased on two subsequent years. So if a protectionist wave in the current context is a threat and it is not a fact yet, uh, we need to explore this carefully. But it's not, it's not yet a fact over which we can argue. Uh, also, there has been some work to look to the effects of increase in protectionism as a consequence of the non-completion of the Doha round uh, by uh, Laborde and Bouet, uh, which shows that this could affect around 10% of the world trade volume. So it's still not clear this result of increase in protectionism, and I don't think there's still solid evidence to argue that there has been a significant effect. Now, why some exporters are, exp exporters are more affected than others? Uh, and there are four major reasons. The geographical specialization, of course. Sectoral specialization, in which sector I, I concentrate most of my exports. International division of labor. 
and trade financing. Uh, and the last one is very important, and as you will see in the simulations, is one of the core issues that we're observing that could turn uh, most of the, or, or, or could be very significant in affecting the trade flows uh, among uh, developing, developing countries. To be able to do these simulations, we use a, a modified version of the Mirage model. I don't want to go a little bit into the details, but the Mirage model is a computable general equilibrium model, multi-country, multi-sector, uh, which is not good for, for macroeconomic modeling, but, but it is good to deal with, with trade issues and to understand how countries are moving and, and how are the changes of trade. So we have modified this model uh, basically using information from IMF and OECD on, on, and ILO on their estimates and forecasts. We have changed the, changing the investment behavior, uh, a short-term closure, a specific tariffs models as a specific uh, tariffs, trade finance as a trade cost, which is pretty important, and a new demand structure with better measurement of income and price elasticities from well 2009. To be able to model the scenarios, we have four steps. The first two are short-term effects in which we look to impacts of demand and investment based on the est estimations from IMF, OECD, and ILO. In step two, uh, we look to impacts of trade finance restriction uh, uh, with, with information from IMF and ICC qualitative assessments. And it's important to mention that these are not necessarily scientific, but these are some assessments that they have been doing, and we are using those numbers. For example, that the trade costs are 0% for ECD, 1% for BRIC countries, 2% for other developing uh, countries. Then in step three and four, we try to model long-term effects. And here, the external constraint is introducing the current account constraint, changing the model closure, and reduction in the global imbalances cut by one-third in five years from 6% to 4% according to, to the IMF estimates. And then we have two uh, scenarios, one which is a deeper recession than the one we are observing. Uh, so same schedule, but uh, succession is effects increased by, by 50%, and then a delayed recovery so that the recovery doesn't happen until 2013. The first graph, uh, basically the squares means agro sectors when you have a square in the line, and the rhombus means uh, that you are talking about manufacturing sector, and we split it by north and, and south. The dotted lines are our baseline scenarios, uh, and we have an index of 100, and then we see how, how they will evolve, uh, the exports volume will evolve uh, over time until 2015. And what is important to see here is first that there is, in the case of, of manufacturing products, there is even a, a decrease until 2010 when you start to, stay, start to recover and start to, to go towards what was the trend of the baseline scenario. This is not the same for the case of agriculture, uh, and the reason is because the agriculture responds la later, and the manufacturing sector is the one that is faster affected because of the high, higher elasticities. But what we can see clearly is that there is a, uh, the, the, the scenarios that we are modeling uh, of the crisis re seriously have a consequence of, over the growth of exports o over time, and this, of course, is a result that we are basically reducing the GDP growth significantly o over time. But agricultural, agricultural sectors are affected less uh, over time. Of course, the south is going to be affected more, and there will be an increase in the difference between the north and the south. What we did here is we wanted to compare uh, two uh, scenarios, one which is the recession, and the second one which is the recession plus, plus the trade finance. And in most of the cases, with, with some exemptions in manufacturing, and uh, with only the exception of manufacturing in the sector, in the economic sectors, we clearly see that with the trade finance, the, the effect is even higher compared to the baseline scenario. What it is telling us is for developing countries and for developed countries, and mostly for developing countries especially, is that the effect of the trade finance, of lack of access to trade, to finance, to be able to do the trade operations that you normally do, will, have a, will deepen uh, the effect over these countries. The effects over developed countries is smaller because they have additional mechanisms and better institutions that will allow them to have this finance compared to what it will happen in developing countries. That's why the blue bar, which shows the, the scenario with recession plus trade finance, the, effect, the negative effect is even higher than in the case of, of, the, of developed countries. Here we did the same scenarios, but we'll try to look through countries. And this is basically compared again to, to the baseline until 2012. And what is showing is that in, in some of the cases, for example, we could see uh, an, imp an improvement relative to the baseline, but again, uh, when we include the trade finance scenario, uh, all of them uh, have a, a negative effect. And in some of the cases, like for example in China and Hong Kong, you will see that they will become more interoriented, so they will reduce uh, the, ex the, the exports and they will import more, which could be affecting positively, for example, countries like Malaysia. 
But again, the trade finance becomes a, a, key, a key instrument and a key mechanism through which uh, the effect will happen. We did this by sectors, uh, and, and our expectation here wanted, was to see how much high value versus other staples and, and crops will be affected. And again, this will depend on the elasticities, but what we observe is that uh, some of the high value crops will not necessarily show a different pattern that will happen with the staples. And in some cases, uh, we will have the same negative effect which uh, compared to, to the baseline scenario. Uh, here we look to surplus uh, and deficit as a percentage of GDP. Uh, for example, one case in which without the trade finance it has a positive effect is the case of Malaysia because they will be exporting more uh, to China, which will, will increase uh, the imports. But we, we see that in most of the cases the effect with, with the trade finance will be negative across. And this is finally the agricultural real value added, uh, uh, where we also uh, observe a significant a similar pattern. And here the difference is between agriculture and agribusiness compared to livestock. In the case of livestock, we expect uh, a bigger effect uh, because of, of it is more elastic towards uh, changes. Then we have the long-term effects. I don't want to go in detail through them. Uh, we can discuss those, those discuss, discuss this later, but it's based uh, on two scenarios, long-term effects with, with, uh, with current account constraint and long-term effects with current account constraint plus reduction of global imbalances. Uh, and again, we find a, a, similar, a similar situation. Finally, these are the scenarios in which we have a, a deeper recession and a, a delayed recovery. And as, as we expected, in the case of the manufacturing default will be longer and will be higher, especially after uh, in, in the years between 2008, 2009, and 2010. And then there will start some, some convergence and, and, and some growth uh, over time. So just to finalize, uh, which are the, the most affected? Uh, small producers uh, should be most affected by the credit crunch. The high value crops uh, seems ambiguous. What will be the strategy under this crisis? There is the role of trade finance, which is extremely important. Uh, and even if recovery takes place, uh, several years of growth are, grow are lost, and this could be affecting seriously the accomplishment of the MDEs. Now, uh, a way to, to uh, or policies that could be impl implemented is for developing countries, especially uh, which were in a better situation than normally they, they had been in previous crises, is to try to find ways to increase a countercyclical demand. Uh, and apparently, the finance creation and a grade of infrastructure could play a crucial role if you want to reduce this uh, trade finance if transportation costs is one of the major costs behind that. And of course, pro poor spending to, to minimize the issues because of, of, of the increase of poverty and malnourishment. Thank you so much.